Tamara Rowland. Welcome, Josh Burton. Hi, thank you for having me. You so know. nice to have you here. You too. You're an actor, scriptwriter, director, mm -hmm. and you just finished your second feature film, mm -hmm. My Hero Prince Harry. Mm -hmm. You done your first feature feature film mm -hmm. last year or two years ago? It was last year. Yeah. So can you describe a little bit how this film was different from your first one? Uh, firstly, uh, the last one or to the first um, was completely different because at, at a basic level it started off as just it was a one man made movie and it's funny because whenever I say that people don't fully get it right but it's, it was in its entirety completely one man made um, with the script writing with the directing with the editing um, and I also portrayed um, three lead roles which were tri triplet brothers in that film and alongside the stories supported by other voiceovers describing other characters and doubles and stuff like that um, and this one was a lot different compared to that because it was a team it was a, it was not only in terms of the budget was higher the production um, value was higher in terms of the equipment that we used the locations one being in the guys hospital um, as opposed to the last one it was a very uh, intimate setting it was mainly focused in a house in a living room um, and that was and then the only main external place that you could really say that was far out there was a police station um, in Bexley Heath um, which was again another great location but this one is just it is jumped up in people I think there's over 26 people in total that have even been involved in this one which compared to one is a huge difference in that way so yeah when you think about your acting and you as a person mm -hmm from your last film to this now yeah can you reflect a little bit on how this has evolved or how you have evolved and changed um i don't know as an actor i don't know um because i made i made it a a, a choice of mine to make sure that I was always going to challenge myself with my craft and I feel that just like my last one was to can I play three triplet brothers and convincingly have them each have their own lives and backstory intentions and vocal patterns speech patterns mannerisms and convey that with clarity which was one challenge in itself. The next challenge of this project was mainly, as an, as the acting part, was putting on almost three stone worth of weight, carrying that around and allowing it to form my, the way I felt, the, the slouchiness, the slowness. Um, I'm just kind of probably thinking if, uh, Sometimes my knees were not feeling as strong. So I kind of just applied that in the same way. So um, I think it's been different, definitely. Um, would I say I know how? Um, I'm not too sure yet, maybe. Maybe I will understand at some point. Um, but right now I just know that it's been an immense challenge for the actor part, as it has always been. And will continue to always be um, yeah and there was another part to that question I think um, I'd say that di that's different though to the overall project um, one thing I will say is I'm, I'm I was a bit downhearted at one point just slightly with my acting in this one because I felt like I didn't have because there was so much other things that was happening 
and and my mind had to have a percentage to I'm still never we'll still never see the one hundred percent ability of my um acting in, in, in this film or in my last film yet because I've not been able to one hundred percent just do that. So if you love it, if you think it's great, that's still a fraction <laughs> of, of of potential in that way. Um in that sense I'd say it was more challenging actually. Yeah. Um because there was more people um to 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 more people's time, more people's well being to also be aware of as well. So how did you prepare to to play Harry? Can you describe maybe first describe Harry a little bit, the protagonist? Yeah. Um <clears throat> so Harry um Harry Solomon is his name. Um the name in itself was there's a lot of thought in the name. Um just to start at the root. Um Harry I feel is a very commercial name, if that makes sense, at least in the UK. Um, and it's become very commercially profound at the moment because of Prince Harry and his um, upcoming wedding um, to Meghan Markle. Um, and the irony in that his, his real name is not Prince Harry, it's Prince Henry. But the world, if they hear Prince Henry, they'll be like, who? but they know Prince Harry. Um, and yeah, it's a commercial name which which meant like it's it's something that I think is familiar but different. Especially wanting to play the role myself as a black male, which I'd be identified as, um, being called the character name of Harry is also unusual, which automatically gives a straight lead of stem to where Harry's base was going to be for me to portray him. Unusual. Um, and then the Solomon is broken down solo and man. Um, being one, Harry being singular as a person in the film. And also it came from the approach to the story of it being an idea from myself, I thought I would apply that strength or strain to the portrayal of the character um, and him feeling like he's going through this journey by himself, similarly to when um, creating the project Solo Man, Harry Solomon. Um, that's the name, that's where it all started from in that sense, unusual solo. Um, so that was that, and that bleeds straight into the the other part of the question where you're saying, um, how was my approach to him? Yeah, it started off with unusual, and the kind of mannerisms and him almost looking blankly into space is an unusual behavior for someone to do. Um, you know, um, it's not a common reality of how you should behave or how you'd see someone to behave. Um, and that allowed me to have a good basis with him. It kind of affected the speech patterns, affected the positioning, the clothing, um, as well as putting on the weight for the role is something else that I automatically wasn't me. I've never been 16 and a half stone in my life, like ever. So I already was stepping into something I've never been before. Even if the mannerisms wasn't there and none of that wasn't there, I, Josh Burton, have never been 16 and a half stone of, especially of a fat weight. So automatically I was already stepping in without doing or speaking in that sense. So would you say that like putting on all the weight kind of helped you to, to get into the role? Um. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, uh, yeah, because it was also, <laughs> in a way, it was almost like a form of method acting, I guess, because 
I started wearing just black and only black. And I could have bought new clothes. I could have bought uh, bigger tops or bigger jumpers or something like that. But instead, I um, I, I then realised the jeans that I had before aren't fitting me no more. Or it's just too tight, you know. And so I was just kind of like, it feels like I can only wear jogging bottoms. And then it, it just adjusted to the the character because I was like again that's just not me I don't just wear jogging bottoms everywhere and anywhere like <laughs> I switch it up a little bit you know um, like I'm now I'm wearing a bit more colour um, so yeah those things just kind of followed I think I think the weight was um, when I when writing the script um, and 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 wanting to 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 kind of think about the word depression um i did think why would what would be a cause and effect of that and not saying weight's the only reason but weight was just one of the reasons that did make sense um to the unusual behavior mm. so yeah i'd say that did help in that way you talk about quite serious issues, yeah, like depression or ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. What caused you to include these these topics? Um, <laughs> uh, it all started with uh, I thank this guy, um, and maybe I'll work with him one day. But it started with Amir Khan, who is a very well-known Bollywood actor. Um, and Amir Khan recently, which is an amazing film, you should watch if you've not seen it, called Dangal, where I didn't see the film first. I saw a trailer of his workout that he did to make the film, and he was, like, put on a mad amount of weight and lost it and burnt it all and became muscle within like a five month period and the challenge within me said okay Amir Khan challenge accepted you know so that's then that then brought me to the idea of gaining weight following that there had to be a reason for, for the character to have gained weight and lost weight in a time span of what it was. In May Khan's film, it was like 10 years. You know, I, I'm not trying to mimic him. I just wanted to accept the challenge. Um, so to then think why, like, what, what, would, what would make him gain weight so kind of quickly and, and then be able to lose it? Um, and something like depression made sense like he made, he lost it he lost himself and just started eating and stuff and like that and he lost his way and that that's where the that the weight came in and that's where um, the, 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 the idea came in to make it about uh, uh, um, about depression in that way and um, and then I was then trying to think of Okay, so what would make him lose it? Because I don't want to be fat forever. I just want to pull it on for the film and then be able to get rid of it. <laughs> you know? Um, so it had to make sense. It wasn't just suddenly he's a couple months later, he's slim. Like, nah, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. So then that's when I was then thinking, okay, what is his why? And the why is life in that way. You know, you have to have your why. Uh, don't have your why, then you won't do it. You know, people can tell you, but if you don't have your own why, you won't do it. And Harry needed his why. And it could have been a male, it could have been a female, it could have been an animal. You know, but in this case, um, um, it was a female. Um, I made it intentional to not 
to for it to not be a direct love story, but it be a story of love. Um, not a story in love, but a story of love, and 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 love being that answer in that way that saves Harry. Um, and the only way that I didn't want to put just a female in the film to just have no direct presence of her own to have no direct um, purpose or validation you know although she isn't um, I'd say the main source of the story I wanted her presence to have a powerful influence by the time the film had ended Um, but I didn't know what that was at first and this is a healthy thing of scrolling through Instagram because uh, I was just scrolling scrolling and then I saw some f- um, campaign about um, gynecological cancer and there was loads of models and stuff that would do doing the campaign with t-shirts and everything um, and I'd heard of gynecology before but I, I didn't I just knew it was like about the vagina but I didn't know what it was you know I didn't know like the depths of it or anything like that and that's when I pursued on the knowledge and finding out more about it in that way Um, and that's when I learned there's five different types and everything Um, and then I just knew this is it this is the message that needs to go in this to make it have validation her have validation as a character and not just to be validating Harry and have nothing of her own. Um, And that's where the two topics came. It was a journey of getting there, but once I got there, they then have created their own journey and will create their own journey. And plus it was great because on this scale, like I hadn't seen, I haven't seen depression conveyed in a way that I'm trying to convey in this film where you see it as literal not just the person that they're down but you also see possibly what they may see and then by the end like you'll be able to see the possibility of recovery and how recovery could happen and within that you also then get touched on an awareness of gynecological cancer something me as a male had no idea what it was and it's funny because since wanted to do this as an idea every woman I've spoken to or female whether she's 18, 20, 25, 30, 50, 60 their knowledge is so limited on this you know so it kind of just goes to say like you know, it's something worthwhile to approach as opposed to just something of approach as well. Mm. You know. It's quite strong as well because the way well, for the people that haven't seen the film yet, mm-hmm. um, to dive into these topics mm-hmm. and the way you kind of tell the story, like it needs like talking about depression you see this character and he's really he's down and low and then he kind of like there's this turning point in his life Mm -hmm. but this traumatic experience is needed for him to kind of touch Mm. that inside Mm -hmm. of him Mm -hmm. so she kind of like touches that love spot in Mm -hmm. him Mm -hmm. which makes like you said love not about love but Mm. is love Mm. in itself and then he finds the love to himself again to Mm -hmm. kind of out of this whole thing mm-hmm. um, it's, it's really strong and very as well like a thing that speaks to so many people I can imagine mm-hmm. so the whole depression part how did you learn or did you talk to people mm. how did you learn about it um, it's, a, it's a bit insane because there wasn't any learning in, in, in at first it wasn't like direct let me find out how I can approach this film. I just started writing. Uh, I just I, I just started writing. Um, 
like and I think I think potentially the main influence of it has been people in my life um I think that's the main influence like I am my I myself like I felt like I've gone through a stage of depression as well um a period in my life and um I realized that when it happened to me it was a, it was a week but it was a week that was a very prominent week um by the end of that week I saw I saw clear as day like there was left and there was right there was a choice and I think there is always a choice I don't think there's no choice I think there is always a choice but then it's not easy how to make it and that's where your why comes in your why needs to be powerful enough that that why guides your choice without you needing to feel like you can do it you know gravity's in acts all the time you know it encourages how high we can jump um but it doesn't say if we can jump or not you know we make the choice to jump or not but gravity encourages how high we can go in that sense if that analogy made sense um but um mainly people because like i've had friends or or family that are living this now um and although um i wasn't mimicking their life in the story um i i i was able to kind of think create the the side that people don't see you know um someone could look at a character like harry or someone like myself right now or themselves watching this and think well they're perfectly fine you know they're all confident and everything like that but really there's so much things that's hidden behind it you know and i wanted to just mainly mainly convey that visually not just the down part that is an element that we see but it's i wanted to convey visually the behind the lines the subtext of that and their elements that you really get to see that of that will really kind of be prominent or more prominent within the project and within the writing um in that sense um but yeah like uh yeah uh depression in that sense is is a coexisting fact of life like it's it's there no matter what um but it it's not always negative um it's 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 really isn't always negative if anything is actually positive which is insane to think of it that way but it is actually a positive thing because it's a, a source of emotion of where you unlock something else you know you want you unlock courage in depression you unlock bravery in depression you unlock confidence you unlock beauty you don't just uh, go there and that's it you know you can't find things if they weren't lost in the first place that's how you find something um and that's the beauty of Georgia in this sense um because Georgia if anything didn't save Harry if anything she damned him because he was safe where he was he was safe he wasn't living but he was safe he was in a repetitive cycle where he was safe her coming into play damns him essentially because it throws him into the open-eyed reality to have to face beyond the net um which is that double-bladed thing is say she she saved him but she also damned him in that sense which did open his eyes and it, it's true like you need to go to that forest to find and the only way you can find is if you allow yourself to be lost um it's the only way in that sense you know
if you do want to go to another place, if you do want to like ascend, and that's ascension, you have to kind of, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that forest part? Like, it sounds to me like it's, it's really the dark night of the soul, like just when mm. you're facing this whole mm. darkness. Um, talk also about the location or how you came yeah. across this place. The place was a mere accident. <laughs> you know, I have to thank um, um, Anastasia or Anamina, um, the assistant director, because she saw the script and we spoke about it and we spent a lot of time together speaking about it. And she mentioned something of seeing like a, like a field of hay, of straw, and Harry walks through the straw. And her saying that, made my mind think something else before I just thought a black space and then you just see this thing in a dark realm or something like that and and I'm I'm very happy that that wasn't the final answer because that is such a stereotypical way of thinking about evil or darkness that it must be in some mystifying dark place you know and that's it like and, and so i'm glad that that was that didn't become the end result you know but her saying that her just opening her mind and saying that field of hay made me think this other place is another world in itself that is just as beautiful but just as 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 distant and as, as mystifying, you know, you can go to the woods. You know what? In fact, it's not even going to the woods. The land of Earth was woods anyway. And out of the woods came cities and buildings and houses and stuff like that. So it's the same in this sense, which is why I'm saying the forest itself is beauty, which is the same line as the depression. It's beauty. It's from there you find it. Um, but the location we did end up using was a place called Bourne Woods, um, which is the same location where they filmed the opening scene for Gladiator. Pretty sure we was 10 steps away from where they filmed. And we built a better set than they did, even though they had millions of pounds and we just had arms and legs and sweat. Um, I'm sure we built a better, lo better set, if it's still standing. Um, but, um, yeah, that location is very, very prominent. Um, it kind of goes back to a story. Um, and I'm going to be very honest here in this story. Um, fairly honest. Uh, when I was younger, I went to a club, um, called Wonderland. And once you, it was amazing. From when you was in the queue, you felt bliss. When you walked into the club, the doors were painted like a wardrobe. You walked through the doors and there was coats hanging from the ceiling. You walked through the coats. And as you walked through, you was in the main area where they had like an ice sculpture, uh, ice sculpted desk where you could buy candy from. Around the corner, there was like an indie band and huge bean bagged areas. And then you go through to the left side and there was a bigger main room. The whole kind of theme, if you're not figured it already, was similar to the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Um, but when I was in that main um, dance floor, um, at the time I'd taken a lot of something um, that, that I probably should have been a bit more mild on. Um, but I'd taken a lot of it and um, I uh, I started going into you could say shock but at this time prior to then prior to this at the, at the same time we've been going outside having a cigarette or a and um, I've been cracking load of banter with the bounce off load of banter me and him were like tight he was like one of my G's he literally saved me because at this point now, where later on now my body started crashing, um, I was just like kind of collapsed on the sofa. My head was spinning and everything like that. He came in, saw me. I, saw, I could see him blurrily out of my vision. 
he ran to the 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 um, bar, got me a pint of orange juice, top G. How this man knew to get orange juice, right? Came back, gave me the orange juice, started drinking the orange juice. I was starting to feel so much better. Um, but during this, and this is the mystifying part, is that this girl came over, she sat next to me, and then she gave me a book. And she said, read this. I opened the book. The first page of the book said, my world, my wilderness. And it was an original copy from the year that it came out in 1959 and it was given to a person called Wilfred because that was all in the first page when you open the book the same Christmas that that book came out was the year that book was given and then she said hold on to this for me I held on to it I like an idiot was like ah oh, a book you know um, she said hold on to this for me she left and then the night was coming to an end and I was eventually starting to feel better. And I never saw her again. I was trying to find her, but I never saw her again. And this night could have been a dream. It could have almost never happened. However, I have that book. Mm -hmm. That book validates that night and that actually happening. Um... But I say that story because the my world, my wilderness applied so deeply to the manifestation of the forest and Harry's mind. Where this is his world. This is his wilderness. And everyone has these worlds and these wildernesses and whatever. And some manage to break the woods of the trees down and create houses in their world and then allow that to be projected and be seen by others. And some are so lost that they think they don't have any tools to use. So they just stare aimlessly at the tree, not knowing what to do. Um, and I kind of wanted to, I kind of feel that that forest in a way is that um, being one of them locations um, yeah it's, it's, it's its own thing it's its own sub story that forest mm. um, yeah that's really strong mm -hmm. he goes into the forest not only by himself but with another character in the film mm. so this strong bond or the friendship that, that comes through as well between these two people. Mm -hmm. What inspired you or what What do you think is the point of this whole, like, he's not alone, like, he's alone, but then there's these important people around him? Because ultimately, no one is actually alone in that sense. Um, I cycled to Ireland last year by myself um, and it was one of the scariest journeys of my life there was times when I, I felt like I found out everything I needed to find out in life I didn't see everything that life has to offer but I felt I felt like I understood every meaning you're meant to understand because I felt lost I felt betrayal I felt happiness I felt saved for many different things that happened but the key one because that question which I'm going to mention is when I was cycling on some of those long isolated country roads with no light no shed of light <laughs> no shed of existence nothing it was just me the bike the light at the front of the bike and the trees and there's moments I'm looking at these trees and I swear where it's like they were talking to me and you could say it's delusional or whatever but it just it wasn't like they were saying Josh come and hug us it wasn't like that but it was just like it's just it just wasn't like I was just alone on that journey you know 
there was something or some that was helping guide me forward on that on that journey there was points that this the sat nav the gps wasn't working you know and i was just following paths there was one part there was one point in particular there was a petrol station it was shut down and closed and i was so sad because i needed to go in there just for two minutes for some warmth and there was four roads there was one in front of me there was one on the left there was one on the right five roads one in front of me, one on the left, one on the right, kind of going like that way. And there was one just slightly parallel to it. And the petrol station that was closed down was in the middle of those two. And then there was one straight, one there. And then the fifth one being the one I just came from. I didn't know where I was meant to go. I didn't know the actual road I was meant to go down. Um, I went down the left one cycled for 15 seconds like this doesn't feel right nah 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 nah, this doesn't feel right went down that one nah 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 nah, I don't feel right tried that one um nah 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 it's not this one I went down the the one right in front of me and I was going and I was going and I was going and I was like yeah like this this feels like the right road, this feels like the right road. Kept on going, kept on going. Yeah, yeah, kept on going, kept on going. And finally I made it to like, I think it was like Leamington Spa. Yeah, that's how far I was. <laughs> I, was I was out there. Um, Leamington Spa and I ended up making it to Leamington Spa Hotel. And if hopefully the guy that helped give me tea at that hotel remembers this and sees this some at some point and remembers this but um it just it just felt like he wasn't alone and and uh that's what i wanted to represent in that way as well like um you're not you know you're, you're not by yourself even sometimes you reason with yourself and you want to make a decision when you want to ask a girl out or a guy out you ask yourself the question or you some you ponder on thought, you question you with yourself, you talk to yourself all the time, or sometimes, which technically means you're not alone in that way, you know, you're, you're, you're conversing with someone, um, even if it's yourself and it's your own psyche, it's still something else, you know, yeah. So I get the impression that during that trip, mm. when you were cycling, you found that that trust feeling, that sense of trust that mm. you just let go and kind of like surrender in a way and just mm. go with whatever happens with the flow. Yeah. That was very present during making this film as well. Yeah. With the crew and the way you approached things. Yeah. Yeah, um you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to. It's scary but you have to. You know. Otherwise, there's no point. That's that's that was that's Harry in that sense. Like he had to, otherwise he was no longer living. And he wasn't living. He was. He was. He. You can't even say it's surviving. He was hiding. You know. Uh, te- well, yeah, he was surviving. He wasn't living. He was surviving in that sense. Um, and then because he did actually reach. You know, each step of the way, he actually turned back. He could have kept on going, but each time he turned, it was something that happened, but he, it was just then right. There was something that turned him, made him turn. Now it's time. You know, and there's different characters in the film that help influence that guide, you know, particularly the shopkeeper. In that sense, but they just have that. A bit more about that character. It's very, very unique character. The shopkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, he's one of my favorites, definitely, because he's um. He's like the voice of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the VOR, as my mum would say, the voice of reason. Mm. Um. 
without you feeling fully that he is. You kind of just see him as a bantering brother or uncle or something. But um, he is he is that VOR in a way, uh, and he um, he's clean. He remains clean, and he's clear. He remains clear. Um, it's why I represented him with the color of blue. Um, he has he has a. There's no um, falseness in his design in that way. Um, yeah, he's he's a good character. He he's he's like that kind of person on on a on a journey where you'll go somewhere, whether it's a new country or something. And you're lost, or you, and then someone just tells you that piece of information, and you go, "Wait, if you weren't there, <laughs> if, if you didn't turn up, and then it's like, Wish, did you, did you, did that actually happen? Like, what? Like, it's it's that, you know? We all it, it happens, but we don't, we overlook it. Mm. We those over, messengers. Yeah, those messengers, but we over, we overlook it, but they're there, they're there. Yeah. They're there, definitely. You know. Okay. You also mentioned the color schemes um, that you applied in the film. Yeah, red, blue, and black. Insanity, sanity, and void. Um, the trifecta, the three, the um, the balance, the yin and yang. Um, they equally showcase where a person is and where a person has been and where a person is going and and that that's a very clear element in the in the film and i think it probably will be in a lot of my work anyway um it is it is something that was inspired partially by the matrix um and then i said it as a term when i was in a state of my education and just said the red pill blue pill effect um, and I just created that as a design where you know it's there on a certain scale like the black being the, the bridge between the two but all in a circle or a triangle continuously connected um, in that way mm. you mentioned the matrix as like an inspiration or yeah, I want. Yeah, I want. Like, yeah, in a way, I'd say, in a way, an inspiration. I would. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say, I mean, I. I know I said that word, but I think. I think more than an inspiration. I think it was just a. Um, it was just an idea, that, that influenced, something else. You know, and, um, it's funny. Because um, the whole pods. And being being trapped in a kind of pods, and and this all being in a particular world, um, is similar. Without me realizing it until after that, it was similar. Um, to an element in my hero Prince Harry, with the the world of the forest. This isn't just the one of them. There's many different versions of forests, for other people. Um, that all have their own but that wasn't a, that wasn't an intention that was just something that just happened um, but I'd definitely say the 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 core theme of what that meant was an influence everyone practically wears black in the matrix mm -hmm. the two pills are red and blue and it means that and they're always able to travel between both voids you know which means and it's similar to Harry in this particular point he throughout the film you see him traveling through both realms whether he realizes it or not as an audience member you see that mm -hmm. so he is the bridge between the two in that mm -hmm. sense mm. so what do you want people to take from this film when they go and see it is there something specific that you yeah um beyond anything beyond the themes beyond the learning of depression or the picking up of depression and 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 the guided cancers beyond all of that um 
I want people to ask themselves the question of um, is it laziness or is it opportunity? The be all end all. That's what I want people to ask. This film would have been so much higher of a film even if I had just £5,000 investment. When you deep what has been made under a wage and no investment, if there was even a minimal one, what would there have been? But it's to say, is it opportunity that stops the evolution or is it laziness?